This metatainment production is brought to you today by the Samurai Aquatics and Decor MetaVenture. Scan that QR code or click that link in the description and dive yourself headfirst into the Samurai Aquatics Discord server to pleasure your peepers on our current and future range of outdoor decor. Established in April 2021, Upland Development United is the oldest and most exclusive and transparent node development collaborative in the Upland Metaverse. Contact more choose Ben68 for more information. Warning! This podcast is produced by Metaverse Ventures Entertainment. It contains unsolicited and heavily biased opinions which are solely the views of the individuals involved. It does not include investment advice of any kind and you are responsible for undertaking your own financial, including tax liability research relevant to your own individual circumstances. Thank you for listening to or watching the UDU podcast. This is U2 number 92, presented by Metaverse Ventures Entertainment, More Cheese, and me, Ben68, featuring co-host Dak, Joe Leaves, the agency, TB125, members from the Upland Development United team, and general Upland community members. Uh, TB's not in today, but he has sent me some details to go through. Thank you for that, TB. Um, today's show is recording live on either Tuesday the 7th or Wednesday the 8th of March, depending on where you're at. And a reminder that if you want to join in live with us, Access to the weekly Zoom is via the MBE Discord server. And the link to that, of course, is in the description. How are you doing this morning, Chiefs? Eh, I'm all right. Eh. I'm just, you know, drinking coffee with my beautiful MBE mug nice. that I got from the merchant. <laughs> well, that's where I got this from, too. Yes. Nice. Looking great. <laughs> yes. All right. Today, in addition to catching up on some crypto and upland news and events from the week that was and will be in and around the upland metaverse and running through our coast host segments today, we're going to touch on the Sao Paulo collection reveal, more changes made to competitive treasure hunts, the supposedly big maintenance period that kicked off all sorts of wild speculation. And speaking of speculation, how about the release of the Giga, Giga Chad factories? <laughs> oh, mama. <laughs> I love that name. I love Giga it. Chad Factories. Yes. Um, we'll also be going through the details of the current Better Late Than Never outdoor decor sale for Summer Aquatics. And if you remember from last week, I mentioned that something big might be coming this week. Well, I'm happy to report that the planets aligned. And yes, today we are going to be going public with what will be the sixth evolutionary stage of Upland Development United, which is part of a wider evolutionary period for Metaverse Ventures Entertainment and several of our MetaVenture and other Web3 ventures. Pretty cool stuff. Um, to wrap up the show, we'll be giving away 7,000 UPEX from last week's weekly challenge, 5,000 UPEX from a new quip submission, and one of our live participants will have their shot at the 1 million UPEX wheels. Now, you make sure you got your, I tell my kids at work, turn your computers on, beep, push the top of your head, turn your computers on, because there may be a pop quiz through the show, and I think it might be, go up to 15,000, maybe 20,000. So if you're in live, get yourself ready because you never know when I might throw that at you. All right, remember that if you are in the Zoom live for the recording and you're selected for the 1 million UPEX wheels, you need to tell us what the code word or phrase is before the first of the three wheels starts a rolling to potentially get yourself a bonus mulligan spin on the final 1 million UPEX wheel. Right, let's get stuck into the Breaking Badly news and take a quick look at what's been happening in some of the crypto and upland markets. Now, I'm going to try something different this week. I just realized that um, I share I share the, the little market thing we do on Twitter. And instead of me having to go share screen on, on several different things, I should be able to just go share screen straight to the Twitter. <laughs> And then I can actually see most of the stuff, which is cool. Wow. So look at that. Speaking of evolution, my brain's evolving. Um, not sure what's happened here with AVAX and Shiba Inu. They've suddenly jumped into bed. Apologies for that. Um, I'll fix that up on the back end. I was playing around with a few things and obviously screwed that up. Uh, global crypto market cap this week, we're at 
one, you know, still we're still over the one trillion, but it is down 5.4%. Bitcoin dominance is flat. And we're still slip sliding away in the crypto ch charts, cheese. What's going on there? A lot of red. Well, if you watch the wine and cheese show this past Saturday, you would know that that Bitcoin kerfuffle. Maybe give a little bit of a oh, synopsis. Context, yeah. Um, so we we do know that the Mount Gox payments are, are coming through at some stage. So a lot of people lost a shitload of Bitcoin. Um, way, way, way back in the very early days and were kind of forced hodled and that's apparently going to start being paid out. So the speculation is that um, that's going to dump hard on the market. So yes, that's probably to do with a look at wax down a whopping 23.6%. Last week it was at um, 8 cents down to ooh, 0.68 cents, 0.068 yeah. cents. Um, there's only one green one there, Chase. Yos, yos, nice. a blend. Okay, well, if you see something like that, if it's red <laughs> across the board, yeah, if it's red across the board and you see one skerrick of green, at least in the ones that um, we're keeping an eye on, it makes you go, hmm. So I jumped on over and checked out what's going on here with EOS, and it turns out that EOS has mm. is has a big EVM launch in April. Um, nice. Ethereum Virtual Machine, I believe that is. Uh, yeah. The EOS Network Foundation will launch the EOS Ethereum Virtual Machine on April the 14th. So we're not going to dive in that here and now, but um, if you want to find out what that's all about, I will endeavor to put the link in the description or you can just do a quick search as well. So I would assume that explains that little bump there, even though it's only up, you know, 0.1 of a percent, but still when everything else has fallen hard, it's, it's nice to see a bit of green. That is nice to see. In Upland, uh, the daily, sorry, the 90 day average daily transaction volume is up again, as with last week. Uh, keep in mind, this is the 90 day, so it's quite a long, takes a while for things to change around here. And the trading volume's also up, which is nice to see. Active wallets down a little bit to 64,810. And total unminted properties, what did we have? We had 5,691 properties minted through the week, which is cool. Yeah. Cities. I don't know. It's all over the place again. Anything jumping out at you, Chase? LA down 27% on the Upex. Well, I'm really surprised how well Detroit is doing. Like, to be honest, I didn't have much um, that slay is, is really distracting me because it's so beautiful, DTEC. Yes. But I didn't have much like confidence in it if that's the word, but it's doing really well. Yeah, it's at the bottom of the barrel with Rio on the on the USD price. It's interesting to note that Chicago has pulled itself off the bottom there. It's It was $3 last week up to $3.30. But yes, Detroit has had a 7% boost on the UPX, was 4,000 UPEX last week up to just under 4,300. Um, what else is happening? Santa Clara's down. Manhattan's up on the UPX, down on the USD. Uh, uh, San Francisco's the flipped. It's down on the UPX, up on the USD. It's a bit all over the place. Yeah. A bit all over the place. Hmm. But yes, now it's good to see Upland kind of turning around on that 90-day average. We'll just have to wait and see. All right. Anything else happening in, in and around the place this week, Chase? Um, you mean in Upland? Yeah. <laughs> well, so Susan Susan Coleman has gotten their um. Oh, the breast cancer awareness thing. Yeah, their headquarters. So that's in Chicago, which is which is is cool. Um, well, actually, Chicago, Los Angeles, and Dallas. So these, these structures will give players access to vital information regarding breast cancer and early detection. Um, they also have the, and, and uh, Mesmi sent this to me, which is pretty cool. Thank you for that. Uh, Jackie Sai building a factory and showroom in Los Angeles. Now, I found out about this actually through Upland Daily. So I bought a few properties next to it. They're still mintable. 
um, properties near there if you're one of the you're the kind of person that wants to be near you know these companies and whatnot not financial advice but this is something that I I like to do personally is uh <coughs> find the find the address and just go and have something near it DTEX asking way 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 he wants to be <laughs> Yes. Well, yeah, just go to LA and you should be able to see it. I'll get you the information afterwards. I don't have that on me right now. But yeah. So the speculation there is that they're going to be building their own Halloween ornaments, or do you think this is for something else? Um, I don't know what it's going to be. I know that like hopefully they do build more because I would love to have some Jackie size more Jackie size stuff. Mm. But yeah. It'd be interesting to see if it's a structure ornament factory or it's a decor factory or is there any indication of what it is? Or is it still being built, isn't it? Um they're both it's both. Oh, cool. It's it's a factory and a showroom. Oh, but I mean the factory, like do we know if it's a structure ornament factory or a decor oh, I don't factory? I don't know. And, and um, DTEC, remember, I put it in Samurai Aquatics BSing chat like a week ago. And we were like, oh, it's not on Art Street, blah, blah, oh, blah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> also, in the Upland Cafe chat last night, um, they mentioned that, well, actually, Blue Rain or somebody mentioned that the Upland Hackathon is again this year. So I didn't know that. I didn't know that they were going to do an upland hackathon. So this is this is pretty good. Um they don't it's, really have it. Not, I wish they wouldn't call it a hackathon because it's not a hackathon. It's just a bloody presentation, isn't it? So GDC, we're coming for you. A few things we care about gaming community development and web three. And hold on. Do you see this? Yep. The connect with us. Yep. All right. Connect with us. Here's a little hint for you. We're also planning a hackathon. So if you're interested in flexing your developer skills and creating something awesome for Upland, make sure to switch by our booth and get all the details. But see, this was posted in um the cafe chat i don't know where it's located so if anybody in here knows where it's located let me know and we could share the link for people to get on that right away i wonder if that's going to be another fifty thousand usd price maybe more Ooh. who knows but we also have uh jazz who wants to talk about some treasure hunting oh yeah there's some news that came out recently i think it was yesterday uh they've um they've changed the uh cooldown periods i'm just uh trying to pull up that information now were the cooldown periods a lot different yeah, so they said that the limited is now changed to three hours, exclusive is eight hours, and rare 12 hours. However, I think um, today I was looking at the cooldowns, and they seem to be only one hour for limited. I haven't checked the exclusive or rare. So does anybody else know anything about this? Does anybody do any treasure hunting? Does anybody want to complain right now? Anybody <laughs> Does else anybody like... other than me want to complain right now? <laughs> I, I, I do treasure hunt every day. And even though they said they made the change, it doesn't appear to currently be in effect because it, ha it I treasure hunted all night last night and there was an only a one hour cooldown for hmm. the, the bottom one. So I will add that in UCC, we have the like a uh, hunter's academy where we have a lot of folks who do a ton of treasure hunting kind of showing and talking about tips and tricks and we started collecting information from them in terms of their experience with treasure hunting over like the past year and a half and how it's evolved and overall the feedback has not been great and so we're going to try to compile that into a quick little like um, 
um, article or I don't know whatever it's whatever we you want to call it, but just like a compilation of like some of our treasure hunting experts and their experience and where the benefit has been and and when I say their experience, I mean some of these folks have been collecting data for months and months, and so you could they actually see the the very objective statistical kind of analysis of data collection and so forth. Kashao is on, in that group too, and he, you know, he's put some information up. So there is definitely a lot of opinions about treasure hunting, but then when you look at the facts and the data behind treasure, it has definitely uh, gotten tougher and I'm not sure if it's valuable. Yes, uh, there's a lot of opinions. I I do a lot of um, standard hunts. I mean, I don't do any competitive, uh, but I have really been enjoying hunting lately. Um, I, I don't, maybe there's a slight difference with the different send fees, but I find hunting to be very successful. Um, and I feel like I get spark chests more often than I used to before they made the changes. Um, I can't think of his name right now, but he's a huge treasure hunter. And uh, Russell? No, not Russell Envy. Um, for Port Vanilla. Tar What's that? Port Vanilla. No, I can't think of his name. He was just on the Upex podcast last oh. week. Um, I'm sorry, I can't think of his name. But Bamtech. Yes, thank you, thank you, Cheese. You got it. <laughs> yeah. No, he he's an awesome hunter and he he doesn't see a problem with these changes at all i really feel like sure <laughs> maybe maybe the numbers have changed slightly but you can still do hunting be very successful build up your spark get extra epics income during the month um i'm loving it i'm not sure what so, all the complaining so, is so i'd just be curious to ask what uh, tier you hunt in Shaq. exactly San Francisco, tier one. Tier one. And Fred, Ooh. yeah. So tier you're doing two. less than 30 hunts a day then? Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. I do about 20. Yeah. So, so that that's about, if you're in a tier one, if you're doing about 20 a day, that's about the, the sweet spot in San Fran, tier one. Okay. And that's what I mean. The the team has actually been doing, and and I'm, so I'm trying to collect all this data, and and the guy, and everyone on the team has been very supportive of like providing information, providing their data, and what they're seeing, like what tiers uh, people kind of have break even points at, and so forth. So you, there's a lot of really good information that uh, the group has put together that we're we're looking to try to do a aggregate of and share with the community. I believe, I believe what they said also is that if you're not hunting 30 to 40, if you're not going over that too much, then it's not really going to affect you because it is a tiered system and the incremental increase. Mm. So I haven't gotten back into treasure hunting since, but I do plan on getting back into it when I have the time available. Very good. I think the one thing that they, sorry. No, I was just going to say, it seems like a lot of folks they, they do it more as kind of a end of day relaxation kind of thing. It's, um, I think someone broke it down to like 22 bucks a month worth of stuff they get out of it. But yeah. for the amount of hours they put in, if you're trying to do it as a, as a financial incentive, I guess, I, I don't want to, I don't know how else to kind of say it, but it, it's not the best use of your time. Let's put it that way. But if you're enjoying it, it's a nice way to just collect some extra revenue and everyone's always looking for that little extra something. Yeah, and I, I guess that's the hardest part for Upland to try and balance is those two sides of the coins. Jazz, you, you brought this up, so we'll give the last word to you. I was just going to say that the one thing that they did do right is that um, they fixed where all the treasures are spawning because uh, for, the, for a long time, they were all spawning at certain places. And um, and I don't know if you guys have noticed, but it used to always spawn at where the planes are, and that's recently changed. That's how yeah. I got However, most of my spark. <laughs> uh, the fountains. Yeah. <laughs> but I also, I have the noticed plane. that the sends the send planes have reduced. So that's my experience. I don't know if anybody else has noticed that. 
interesting. Yeah, Not I did see San somebody Francisco. somebody was complaining about that in I don't know if it was New Orleans or Kansas or somewhere, and they showed like an overview of the, that city, and there was hardly any, hardly any at all. So, all right. So moving on for the. Legit- I was talking. You just like totally oh. talked over me. So you say, Geez, "Sorry, you can finish what you were saying." Sorry, mate. Go for it. I don't. I don't notice any difference in planes in San Francisco. There's always a plane for me there. But uh, just to finish off on the upland <clears throat> information um there was a huge maintenance this this past weekend but they never told us what it was about so people are still kind of speculating if it was just to kind of like fix things up or if there is something waiting for us so if yeah. anybody knows anything about that or finds anything out please let me know yeah the speculation got pretty wild as to what what it was going to be about um yeah it kind of threw us for a bit of a six because that was the when they said that that was going to kick in like the down period the extended down period that was right when we were going to do our next sale so we moved that forward and then then it was delayed as well so yeah it appears that it was just all back end stuff but um yeah i don't know but some of the speculation that I, that was out there was quite entertaining people just yeah. kind of get way too carried away i was like spark spark Yes. I mean, no, STEM, STEM, I mean, STEM. Ah, oh, that's that's going to be, if that drops, that's going to be a Genesis week thing, surely. All right, yeah. I that's would love like it. the mic drop at the end of Genesis week. Yeah. <laughs> that like would be funny they... if Dirk drops the mic while he announces it. Well, remember last uh, last Genesis week, it was the Sol Polo thing. They played that ad right at the end. And that's, ever, you know, kicked everybody well, off. I hope it's that. Danny that talks about it because the way she explains it is awesome. Yeah, she is awesome. She's really, she's really informative and, and, and very helpful on Twitter. Yes. All right. So yeah, TV's not in, but he has sent through a bit of a blurb, as I said. So where are we here? Uh, welcome to your weekly legits update provided by TB125. Stop by Fremont Fanatics at 1120 Sharon Road, or as we like to say in Australia, Shazza Road for FIFA legits with many priced at less than 500 UPEX. According to TB, this week's hot topics are FIFA. Sales of low-value legits are up, with most purchases being made by new players. Lots of spotlight mementos are appearing in the market in anticipation of the clips being released on the 20th of March. Some are very reasonably priced when compared to what it costs to get the passes and exchange them originally. Uh, there are still some unexchanged passes on the market. Ooh, wow. So players willing to take a bit more of a risk could purchase one of those and ex- exchange it for a memento, memento themselves. Um, TB is interested to know if there is a list out there anywhere showing which mementos have yet to be minted as it might help determine whether certain passes are worth buying or not. Um, TB is being very transparent here and saying his venture dues for this month were 700 UPEX compared to 6,000 UPEX last month. So that's a good indication of the um, drop that's happened there. And this suggests that very few high value items have been sold across the game in the last few weeks. For NFLPA, he said, if you haven't already seen them, the NFLPA leaderboard results are available and you can find the link in the events winners section of the in-game chat. The rest of the NFLPA world is pretty quiet, which is to be expected since the season has ended. Soccer news, not a lot to report in the world of soccer at the moment with these new international cities starting to appear. He's hoping they might introduce a more interesting collection system or bring an entire league from one country into the collections for next season. Um, For cars, because as we know, TB's got a car showroom as well. He said that USD sales are stable with some less desirable cars being offered at just below mint. Um, UPEX prices are well above the mint prices. And as the cheaper ones get snapped up, that price is continuing to rise. Uh, He has removed most of his cars from sale in the hope that Upland come good on their Q1 plans to have vehicles for transport enabled, which he thinks will drive a rapid rise in prices. Yeah, we'd have to for sure. And vehicle MetaVentures still don't have the ability to allow other players to submit vehicles for listing, which is continuing to drive out of game sales where we have unfortunately seen a small number of scammers taking advantage of less experienced players. Yes, thank you for that, TB. And don't forget to head on over to, where is it? 1120 Sharon Road for FIFA Legits. All right, where are we at now? I think we're up to, who we got? Over to you, Dak. 
If you like. Right. Yes, 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 yes. There you go, Mike. All right. So, uh, in uh, Upland Racing news, um, one of the things to talk about today is that uh, Viva Las Upland and Central City, uh, Century City have partnered on a series showcase racing event that's happening March 12th. They're going to kind of go through all the different um, series of MV motor cars and just kind of do trim level testing to see how fast the different trims are and so forth. So the R's, the E's, and the standards. And um, that's happening March 12th. Uh, there are prizes uh, that are being offered, including Floating Farms. Our friend from Floating Farms has donated some NFTs. Uh, test tubes from um, test tube statues from Upex World, and uh, four properties that include a URL stand. So there's some good prices that they put together. Uh, Century City, as some of you might have seen or heard, uh, is being managed now by um, Mahoney MV Motor uh, MV Holdings. And so, you know, Matsuda R has really kind of been growing into the whole uh, ec uh, automobile economics model and, and they're doing quite a bit. So uh, CC is now being managed by them. They've combined with the Viva Las Upland uh, node and the Poker Hand node to kind of put this event together. And so it's been pretty cool. It's nice to see the community kind of going out and trying different things. And they're uh, actually no... becoming real nodes. It's becoming a trend. Look at that. There's these individual node, you know, individual neighborhood development projects <laughs> coming together, working together. That's yeah, becoming real nodes. Right. That goes from a neighborhood project to a node, right? Yep. And so, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, the other thing is that uh, URL season is... Um, planning for that is fully underway. We are expect, you know... We are looking at starting doing our first season um, starting in April. We have uh, pretty much just about secured all of our gold sponsors. I'm working on one last one. And then we have some silver sponsorships that are left that are being done. We have identified <laughs> 10 drivers. So our race will we have a we have room for one alternate driver. And the idea behind the alternate driver is if for whatever reason our 10 committed drivers are unable to race one day or something like that, uh, they have the opportunity to have an alternate driver sit in for them. And so if you have an S1R and you don't want to commit to six races over a two month period, you could uh, uh, ask about being an alternate driver. There's only one spot left for that. But if you have an S1R and you want to try to see what you can do with it on on a racetrack, let us know. We will be, um, we have identified the seat, uh, the, the tracks we will be using for the six races. And we will be announcing that in late March as the sponsors for each of the tracks kind of gets their uh, stuff together. I want to make Let's a see. little, I wanted to say something real quick. Uh, we were doing a bit of a, an experimentation um in the upland daily elijah put together a race and the semi truck blew everybody away i said that from the get-go when semi trucks first became available we we did a race in url when we were doing time trials and we actually were tracking and the only ones that were <laughs> faster than the trucks were the s1rs yeah <laughs> that's <Christ>. ridiculous <laughs> that's great and What's fun about the semi trucks is watching them kind of like they 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 like do ram right through. around the track. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, I love it. Yeah. yeah, the trucks actually, the semi trucks are actually probably one of my favorite races. Now we're not going to do that in URL, but it is it's a lot of fun. We definitely want to. Um, I'll definitely do invitationals to, because. It was fun just watching those trucks race. And it was amazing to just see them blow away S2s, <laughs> S4s, pickup yeah. trucks, everything. <clears throat> um, are you going to do S1Es? Good question. Thank you. So the first season we're going to do, the six, uh, six race season, is going to be the Champions Cup. And that is the S1Rs. Then after that, I don't know when yet, we will be doing the pro circuit and that's going to be the S1Es. Yay. And so 
uh, we're doing the big championship one first, and then we'll do the S1Es after we've learned a little bit more about what to do, how to work it, what yep. can we do, and so forth. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a very clever way to approach it, to do a like, the S1Rs are essentially your little test bed where you're going to see what works, what doesn't work, how to better streamline things uh, before you go full on with the pro season. It was also interesting because, you know, there's only 50 of those cars. And like, for example, Thank Me Later owns 10% of them, right? So uh, trying to get 20% of all of the drivers that have S1Rs to, dra to race was a bit of a challenge, uh, but it does make it a lot more exciting because these are the best of the best kind of racing vehicles. And so uh, it is, I have always said that I wanted to follow the F1 kind of model and F1 started their season this, this past weekend. Uh, so it's exciting to kind of try to line it up and, and, and get it going. Absolutely. The other thing that I'll say is that, um, you know, Upland does their kind of show every week. Um, this week, if you have an, uh, the opportunity, definitely look out for it and, and tune in. Ooh, is that a little hint at something, is it? I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, but that's all I could say. <laughs> yes, and speaking of the F1, if you didn't catch the wine and cheese show, and I did share it about as well, um, the McLaren Formula One team is offering, if, if you get on the, one of their websites, you can collect yourself a set of free NFTs. And if you hold all of those at the end of the season, they're doing a whole bunch of prizes and stuff as well. So um, definitely were, check that out. They were gone by the time I got on. I mean, and that was only like four hours after you posted and it was gone. It was yeah. done. I, I, I was lucky to get mine when I did too, because I kind of, we covered it on the Wine and Cheese Show and then I kind of forgot about it. And it was right at the end of the race weekend. So apologies for that. But yes, yeah. yes, make sure you all get right. on to that for the next races. All right, cool. and uh, um, that's kind of about it for Upland Racing. Um, we'll, we'll end it there. All righty, thank you, Dak. Um, over to you. Who is it? It's not Joe today. I don't believe Joe's in today, so it's just the Rob Show. Hey, man, this is Joe. I'll channel him. Hey, Rob, you ready to do this, man? <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, like man. I don't know how like Joe's going to feel about it, but that was pretty good. It was pretty that good, was right? Good. If you could have gone <laughs> deeper, I think you would have had a I, mean, I don't know a, if I can. On. Hey, man. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, welcome to episode number 25 of... Jeff it like it's hot. Jeff it like it's hot. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Well, <laughs> we'll start off with something I believe uh, to be pretty cool. And this is a heads up for this is next Tuesday, but the show passes before you'll get another heads up. So this is your one and only heads up. So next Tuesday on the 14th, 11 a.m. PT, Funko releases their Series 1 Dungeons and Dragons digital pops. And uh, these look amazing. And I've played here and there over the years. So this is something I'm definitely going to buy into. Um, I mean, hell, you could incorporate maybe some of these NFTs with the real game potentially if you wanted to get creative. Um, I'm sorry, when is that again? Because this I will get. Yes, next Tuesday on the 14th, 11 a.m. PT. Yep. Um, so they haven't uh, came out with and shown all the physical redeemables yet other than the Grail, which is the uh, Aserac, which is the Lish or the Demolish King of Horrors. The characters that we can confirm are the gel gelatinous cube, and this one's quite adorable. It's your favorite lime jello with a sword skull shield inside. And trust me, this one's not scared. It just has the jello shakes, if you will. <laughs> um, a five-headed dragon, uh, Tiamat, one of the worst characters to run into, the Mind Flayer. Uh, Misk and Bo Boo, and they bring back the cuteness with a little hamster that sits on the warrior's dome. And even a 20-sided die in box. Um, before a few of my friends left town, we uh, used to play like a weekly games before COVID happened. So that was kind of fun. Anyway, next one that we got Robert Bone, who Joe is a big fan, and myself. Um, he's putting out a few. Well, it looks like seven of these heads, uh, number 112. The way it works is like it's going to be 112A, 112B, etc. And the first three drops 
and the Thursday is a blend. Friday is a craft. So he puts out a bunch of cool things like to do with them, at least, you know. Um, and he's also doing a cool animation of heads with from the uh, wax and Ethereum collections he does. And that link will be in the description. Do you want me to <laughs> These play a little bit of that? Sure. This is, um, if you suffer from epilepsy, you might want to shield your eyes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let's see if it'll work. It's a bit glitchy, but yeah, it, sh it showcases a lot of the, the NFTs he's working on. He's put it together as a full-on animation piece. So I don't know. My yeah, he's pretty good. My laptop's struggling to show it on Zoom, but yeah, it's just awesome. Yeah. That reminded me of Beavis and Butthead. I don't know if it was supposed to. It might have. Anyway, uh, that'll happen at one uh, one forty four p.m. California time or four forty four p.m. Bronx time, and it looks like they might do that each day this week. So, uh, want a little head? Look no further. This guy uh, is so motivational. My God, I love yeah. his work. Yes. Anyway, don't be mad at me. Joe, Joe wrote that one. Anyway. Um, as you can you can tell i'm doing this episode without joe and he's uh out there slacking off but he what is you building... mean, buddy i'm right here yeah <laughs> well he's doing a solar tree today so he's trying to change the world oh you know, good job good. So, you know when he told me that i was just like damn son anyway, <laughs> uh, see, he's not the only one with dad jokes <laughs> anyway <laughs> Next up, we got some Avalon news that is now open for the Silver Pass holders, and I believe Joe has a uh, Emerald Pass. Do you know when the passes will have access, Cheezer Deck? Today, also, today? <laughs> right, Deck? Boom, 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 get it, get it. <laughs> okay, all right, fair enough. Do you have, do you have the other comments or game on the game progression? I mean, are we screwing up if we haven't bought in yet? No, there's still plenty of time. I mean, the it's not it's not that expensive to grab an Emerald Pass, but if you're gonna do it, do it now because you don't have as much time as the Gold Pass people. There's only what like a month to get 21 passes. With the 21 passes and the Emerald Pass, you will get a what is it rare character deck. So emerald is rare. Yeah, rare. Silver is <clears throat> epic. And uh, gold is legendary. And you're still in Correct. alpha, right? This is all still in alpha. So oh, this yeah. is all alpha. So There's think of it as of phases of alpha. So this is alpha uh, phase two. Phase, yeah, phase two. Excellent. I, I'm not trying to miss the boat because that game looks awesome. <laughs> so... What's amazing is also the amount of wax streamers that are starting to jump in on this game. Well, I was actually going to just bring that up. Um, I know you guys are into it, but uh, also T Davis and Kitty are like streaming it now too. I don't know if those were included in your list. I, I got them. I got TD into it. <laughs> yeah. Morty's has been kind of bringing in the heavyweights from wax. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's pretty neat. Good job. Yeah. Thanks, the, who who are the other ones you got more cheese? Uh, uh, Nuno, uh, Zeus from Atomic Zeus, Club. Yeah. So I I um, I'm trying to find as many people in the Avalon chat that I feel have um, you know what it takes to be a, a a great player. Like I got Crypto Witch in there. I've seen her in many other uh, Metaverse projects. So so yeah. It's a great guild. Me, Dak, Mass, Adamus, we we uh, founded it, and like like we each have our own piece to put in. Like Adamus is leading the the gaming and the rating. He's such a genius at that. And then you know you have me with the art, and you have me with the talent acquisition, and then you have Dak and Mass with the business aspect of it. It's just a a win 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 win. <laughs> and there's still plenty of opportunities to get in and create your own guilds and that sort of thing as well isn't oh it? yeah definitely yeah. yeah like we're we're it's very it's like you know me when i got excited about all the nodes coming in or community projects <laughs> uh but they want to call themselves nodes, so i'm okay with that um <clears throat> we are great like we need more people we need more guilds coming in and we don't mind helping them out um 
it just brings more value to the game. It brings more people in and, and it's, it's just awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, and with all of the streaming and all of the attention it's starting to get on the wax community, the, there's a lot more, um, uh, folks that have guilds in other games that are starting to look at this and thinking about, you know, how do we engage, how do we build the guild and so forth. And, and so we're supporting and helping out where we can. Yeah. Yeah. looks great. So if you go to the Dino server, there was a screenshot competition that was done where people took screenshots from in the game. Oh man, it is beautiful. So, so you can go into the game at least, right? Oh, we've been playing for two months. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm we waiting. were taking pictures yesterday and last night. And like the, the founder, the actual owner of the game, Marius, he's so freaking cool. <laughs> he comes and plays with us, you know? So it's like not a game where you can never talk to the person who's creating it. He's there, he talks to everybody, he's amazing. And he was on the Wine and Cheese show this past Saturday. So if you wanna know more about the game, make sure you, you uh, check out the Wine and Cheese show, plus do the challenge because I have a really awesome NFT that I created that people will get for doing the challenge. I will show it later. I don't want to interrupt the drop it like it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, just a couple more here. Wednesday at 20 UTC, our noon PST, Tales of the Crypto have their sixth action collab. And I don't have much info, or I, and I haven't seen this, but uh, anything, you know, Tales of the Crypto touches dies. So, I mean, turns to gold. I just <laughs> wish I had more <laughs> that was <a> good <laughs> I wish I just had more moolah to play with, like everything, you know. Yeah, they, they drop sell out quick. Yeah. 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 So. They're they're that classic like NFT game that that you love because the community is there. They're great. They they they're they're with the community as well. Yeah, they're excellent. I like yeah. their style. So. And then Saturday at 1800 UTC, 10 a.m. PST, Future Relics dropping their hollow paper lens. And um, I don't know, if you scroll down, you can see some of their hollow type stuff. I think there's like a gnome. Um, so, and that stuff's kind of cool. So thought I'd mention that. And on Saturday, same time, 1800 UTC, 10 a.m. PST, we have one of our favorite cat ladies dropping um, the, a mystery cat. So, so and now we're up for this 25th edition of Drop It Like It's Hot. Drop It Like It's Hot. Can I make a uh, Can I make a request for uh, an NFT project that I want you guys to look into and see if they're worthy? Yes. Nova Pangea. Okay, we mentioned them. Yeah, Goldie and I have yeah. been getting uh, really big into it. They've been adding so much, like almost every few weeks there's there's an update so it's just really cool and they came out with a coin okay yes. and don't forget to to jump on over to um there'll be a link in the description to the nifty blocks and support help um rob and joe and all that's going on at fourth world digital and nftopia is that what nice. else you got to promote there robert that looks cool that's about it that's, about that's it, really right. cool other than i have a football shop in united center if anyone's looking for stuff a thousand and cheaper oh, can you put this link um in the chat i really uh, like that uh i'll do that now yep that the digitopia swag oh, anyway, yeah, thank you guys thank myself. you um yep dropping that in chat now there you go thank you that is awesome all right while you're buying that yes i'll follow up um <laughs> on the wine and cheese show last week in episode 74 we were joined by a returning guest co-host dak to get up to speed with the development of the nft and blockchain based open world fantasy memorp mmorp <laughs> Uh, Avalon the Druids by Daniel Games. Um, we last spoke to Marius, the CEO and founder of Daniel Games in early August 2022. And just like then in this episode, Marius passionately went into extensive details related to what is already a sector leading blockchain game that is absolutely loaded with jaw dropping visuals and highly immersive experiences. Um, yeah, it's 
pretty cool. So check that one out. Uh, following the interview, we discussed the continued reluctance of mainstream gamers to embrace NFTs, some of the drama related to the release of Sao Paulo City and the Upland Metaverse, the One Piece Labs and Upland Metaverse partnership. Um, as we mentioned at the start of the show, we kind of touched on the Mount Gox saga. And um, then what, what else was there? There was Mark Zuckerberg's latest meta challenges, the McLaren Formula One team's NFT collectibles, people getting married in Decentraland via Taco Bell and Snoop Dogg's latest foray into Web3. It was all happening. Um, <clears throat> it was an exceptionally long show, that one. And we had a few technical difficulties on the back end of that recording. So apologies if that messed up your usual dose of the worst show ever. Uh, <laughs> It is a good reminder, though, that if you happen to be a guest on the show, we aren't in the habit of editing stuff. So if you ask us to edit stuff up, we chances are we'll probably stuff it up because... Yeah, we will. <laughs> after all, we are long-form content creators. We're not uh, fancy YouTubers per se. Well, to be fair, Marius was very appreciative because um, he likes to share a lot. And as yep. someone who has a good deal of investment. I know he hates that word uh, into his project. I want to make sure it succeeds. So I wanted to make sure I caught every single thing that I thought was not supposed to be in there. And there was one I missed and that meant, you know, taking down the video for a little bit until that was taken out. But other than that, yeah. Yeah, he's a super passionate guy. And he once he gets on a roll with describing things, he, there's a couple of times where he's like, oh, I shouldn't say that. Cut that, cut, cut that, cut that. Cut yeah, that. I get that. And we're like, oh, shit, we don't usually catch it. But yeah, right. So Cheese looked after him on the back end. All right, Cheese, you give us a hint before. What else is happening in the MBE? Oh, my God. As you just take a big chug of like, What do you got to share? All right. So I have two things to share. Let's see if I remember it. Um, all right. So the arrays for UPX World are going to be ending on March 11th. I have a birth of a metaverse there that I want to share. If you are in love with this as much as I am, you're going to want to own one. Uh, from what I understand, and please forgive me, TML, if I mess this up, or Dr. Novi, uh, rather. Um, if you own these, you can burn one or a certain amount to be able to get it onto a piece of merch in the game or real life. Uh, so yeah, if you want any of these, just you know, make sure you pick it up before it ends. And also, let me share the What's Danny going on with you? You're um, you turn into late Les Claypool. You're doing getting a bit of Primus action going on. My name is Mud. What's that about? <laughs> His pod was calling me Angela Marchese, like my whole name. So um, I figured I'd put my name as Mud. Nice. <laughs> and then here is the. Avalon oh, this the is Druids. The NFT. Yeah. <laughs> So you can get your hands on this one. Now, I can believe how fast Cheese <clears throat> pushed this one out. Um, super detailed NFT. You can get this for free just by listening to or watching the last episode of the Wine and Cheese Show and following what you outlined. How do you get that? So there's a few details there. Um, as I said, that was a very long show, pushing three hours. So make sure you're listening at 2x speed minimum. Yeah. <laughs> get I your ears you and eyes clue. used to it. I give you one clue, Twitter. Twitter, there you go. Twitter. Nice. All right. In Summer Aquatics and Decor, if you haven't already seen, our Better Late Than Never sale is currently underway with massive Christmas spirals and a Halloween sign available. Um, I'll pull that up again just for a bit of self-promotion. Um, so these are the Christmas spirals. And there's five of those, five colors. Uh, they are Epic Rarity, 1,000 Max Mints. Um, we're selling those for 24,000 Upex or $24 each. And also, um, I'll click on over to this. We also have a Halloween sign. And now this is this is the Halloween sign as it looked when we submitted it. Um, at, by the time we got through the process of approval and came in game, the wood grain on the actual in-game version of it is much darker, which unfortunately makes it very hard to read some of the text. Uh, that's a kind of lesson learned for us to be aware of that in the future. Um, 
as they kind of not where we wanted them to be, we decided to give those away rather than sell them. And their epic rarity, again, 1000 max mint. So if you pick up five of the spirals, you will get yourself uh, one free Halloween sign. And that'll be for every five spirals. I know a few people got in and picked up, you know, 10 or 15 of the Christmas spirals. Thank you for that. Um, so yes, in that case, they'll be getting two or three Halloween signs for free. Now I have been, have been getting a few questions in DMs and also the Samurai Aquatic server. Uh, how do I get my hands on my Halloween sign? Uh, it'll take a couple of weeks for us to rip down and double check all the data for the sign giveaway. So please bear with us and basically we'll be in touch. Um, we'll get a list together of who's qualified for it and we'll reach out. Um, other Summer Aquatics news, uh, if you were aware, as that sale kicked off, I actually broke the showroom UI as part of that sale. Um, the 30 Aqua Vista Way showroom is a small showroom, so that has a max capacity of 250 listings. I hit that, I hit that amount as part of that sale and it triggered an error message. Um, once I okayed out of that error message, it kind of glitched out the whole system. And even after, you know, items were sold or removed, so it dropped down to 240, 235 listings, it was still throwing the error. error. So it cleared out by itself after about 30 minutes, but it repeated again. Um, I've given all that information to the team, of course, because we are better within the better and they're going to look into it. So apologies if you got caught up in that. It kind of happened to glitch out right as I was listing the last white Christmas spiral. So I know, um, I think it was the Goldsmith and a few people, or it might have been Nubex, he got back on the plane to Manhattan and I was like, oh, they're back for sale again. So yes, apologies for that. Um, and yeah, I, was, I don't know if I mentioned, I think I mentioned before the show kicked off, uh, there are some gnomes still, well, there's heaps of gnomes still available for sale in at the 30 Aqua Vista Way showroom. And that 6,800 UPEX kickback is still ongoing too. So if you pick up a gnome for, I think it's $19.99 or something like that, you get 6,000 UPEX kickback at you. All right, wine of the week this week. Now this is, for me, this is not really a wine. It's kind of a quality of life feedback that I also shared with Lisette and Jennifer and the outdoor decor team. Um, the showroom displays, it displays items as they are listed, not by item type, which kind of triggers me no end. If, if you've seen the 30 Aqua Vista Way showroom, you'll see how much of a pedantic freak I am as far as organizing things. So it's all looks nice and neat. But if you go into, if you press the shop now button, it lists the items in the order that they were put up for sale. So I could have, I could have put up like five saunas for sale and then five other things, five other things or whatever. And then if I put up a couple of more saunas, then that's at the bottom. It makes for a very kind of messy uh, customer experience. You essentially have to scroll through the entire 250 listings to find something. So yeah, it's, it's very annoying. I'm hoping that they can fix that. So it's, it gets, it gets um, arranged by item type. So all it doesn't matter when you list them, all of the saunas will be in the same spot, all of the what gnomes or whatever. So yes, that's my wine. Anybody else got a wine? <coughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Happy Larry's. I think Rob. we got I think everybody got their wines out with, with the, the treasures. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then we'll flip over to the win of the week. Uh, my win of the week is I picked up a 692 upsquared property in Diamond Heights for 300K. Uh, Diamond Heights is the neighborhood just below Midtown Terrace and the UCC is currently building an additional small showroom on it for me, which I'll use to apply for another MetaVenture. Yes, I've got my hands full with the outdoor decor, but that doesn't mean I don't want to do more stuff. So that was a little win for me. That is a win. Anybody else had a win? Well, I'm, I'm getting my factory done, so I'll be ready for <clears throat> another manufacturer, another uh, meta venture uh, when those come out. Oh, who's sitting on there? I missed, I missed the, uh, I missed the wine, but if I can, I, I'm waiting on getting my meta venture open still for floating farms and uh, it's been months. Puppet? Yes, it is. Hello. Hey. Hey, I miss you guys too a lot. Um, here, I'm at work. Hey. 
That's me and my dog. <laughs> but yes, I'm so sorry that I'm not with you guys. I really just one of the made. I have like my glasses cleaner looks like Marty. <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh. it does. I don't know how Marty would feel about that. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> but but yes, all, all jokes aside, I really hope they give me a chance to open this floating farms um, showroom or you know soon because it was my main. That was my main goal when I originally got into Upland was to eventually open a store or to run some type of, um, you know, um, shop from the, the platform. But um, I haven't even heard anything back. And um, I know when they initially ever re released, I've actually submitted for every meta venture that was uh, mm. was um, available. So and I mean, it's I, I'm well, it's well written. And, uh, you know, I have everything that they're, they're requiring. And uh, still no word back. Yes. Um, Shaq so, has um, said in chat that uh, she thinks Upland is way behind in responses to applicants. So, uh, yeah, everyone's yeah, been I, waiting for months. I think so too, Shaq. Um, but it, it is. It's kind of a kind of a bit of a bummer, um, especially when you have people that that already have a product that they're you know they're and um, you know my whole thing to moving forward with floating farms was to actually incorporate it and I don't want to give away too much but incorporate it into Upland's world and this has definitely put a hiatus on that plan. So. Are you in the UDN space? I think I was for a bit. Um, I know somebody said it earlier that you know it's getting ridiculous with our list of discords that we have now but um, oh we I got news think... on that coming up. <laughs> oh good good. But uh, I, I will definitely take another look if that'll help out with the process. Yeah, um, get yourself into the UDN because uh, I can't speak for him, but I believe that's how Elijah got his thing started. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm definitely not giving up yet. This is my ultimate goal to be a yeah, little puppet don't give selling up. things. <laughs> and don't forget it. that we waited two years to get kicked off with our MetaVenture too. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you guys should definitely definitely be in the front and foremost uh i love the stuff that you're putting out the art is ridiculous so all right guys but i'm gonna go mute for a bit but good i miss you guys so much i'm gonna miss i'm gonna you. have to record something soon but all right cheers buddy cheers. and cheese thinks you might be crunching around in snow i i, I think you might have got a job in a bubble wrap factory cheese <laughs> He's rolling around, <laughs> rolling around in his bubble wrap. <laughs> I can, oh my God, I'm picturing that and it's making me so happy. Puppets on his hands and feet, yes, having the time of his life. Yes. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, what? <laughs> are you, done? what are... you were right, you were right. <laughs> oh, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That was eerie how accurate you were. That's funny. <laughs> Um, all right, cheese. What's been going down in Bronxdale this week? Bronxdale, I'm almost done with my factory. Uh, hired out the UCC to build it up for me. They're great. They're doing a great job. Just had to sit back and let them do their magic. It's yep. right outside of Bronxdale because I didn't want to put an ugly factory in Bronxdale, but I do have my showroom and I'm planning to do another showroom. And we have another apartment just about almost done. If I could find it, I can tell you. And there it is. Let's see. The writer. He has about two days, seven hours left. And then let me tell you, my factory has doo -doo 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 cheesy's world. 11 days, 12 hours left. So everything is coming along nicely. Awesome. Very good. Yeah. Um, for Midtown Terrace, we were at 84.2% last week. Uh, we had Coop finish a build, which I think is what boosted us up to 84.3%. As we've been mentioning, we're on the very tail end of what we can do there. So it's just slow and steady. Um, Want to extend a congratulations to the Century City team who are rapidly approaching 75% developed. And of course, to Rancho Park, which is heading towards 90%. As we keep nice. saying, noting ain't easy. <laughs> so we can definitely 
appreciate the people that stick to the plan and keep grinding away at it. So, oh yeah, well done to you. In other UDU news, uh, my last two builds in the school node are underway. I think they're going to finish up in the next forty-eight hours, something like that. And all of my Strutwood node builds are up and have begun. And um, as I said, yeah, the UCC is also banging up Sharon for me. And we've got some more UDU news coming up a bit later in the show, as I said. Now, the code phrase for this week's 1 million Apex wheels uh, is, sorry, Uplanders Together Strong. Uplanders Together Strong. Now, without cheating for a 5,000 Apex pop quiz, can anybody name the movie franchise that code phrase is inspired from? I'll double the prize if you can name who said it, and I'll triple the prize if you can name the specific movie it was said in. Five. Four, three. Planet of the Apes. Dirty Harry. Oh, Jazz got it. <coughs> Jazz got it. Planet of the Apes. Yes, that is that gets the five thousand upex. So, can you say who said it? The ape said it. Which, which one? <laughs> Caesar. 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 She got right. it. She got it. <laughs> and can you name the specific movie it was set in? Planet of the Apes. That's Two. the franchise. Two. <laughs> <laughs> no, anybody else in chat? Let me check. Da, 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 apes 2, Apes 3. No, I'll have to give it away. Well, all right. Well, 10,000 Apex on the way to Jazz. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to more cheese, Jazz. <laughs> Return, Thank you, more to cheese. The, Return to the Planet of the Apes. Is yeah, that I've like actually watched all of it... Planet of, like all the old Planet of the Apes, all the old yeah. ones. I haven't, Is... I don't think I've seen the, 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 the newest new... one. That Eli- came out a few years ago. Yes, Elijah, it was. is that is that a sequel to Return to the Blue Lagoon? <laughs> well, it was. It was actually. It's called. It's from Rise of Planet of the Apes, or that I believe it was also seen in War for the Planet of the Apes. So I would have paid both of those. But yes, congratulations. Code phrase: Uplanders together strong. <laughs> Um, we didn't really touch on the Sao Paulo collection reveal. Did anybody want to dive in that? Anybody had some luck with the Sao Paulo collection reveal after all the whole fiasco that kicked off there? I managed to get a few in one of the limiteds, which was nice. I mean, every everyone was a collection, so. <laughs> Everybody gets a collection. A collection everyone. For yes. Collections for us all. I don't know what's going on in chat. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't look. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I'm kind of waiting. I've, I've stacked a little bit of balance there. I'm hoping that, um, you know, we get an extension there. I'm hoping for a Buenos series extension, a Sao Paulo extension. And then I'm hoping it kicks off like Rio where there's some nice big juicy collection properties that sit there unminted for a while. And then I'll dive in and have a, stab at that myself because um i've been selling so many properties lately lately my um dividends have started to drop so i need to boost those back up a bit all right we covered the treasure hunt changes um we kind of covered the big maintenance period next up on the list is the giga chad factories now this was a kind of this just <laughs> dropped widely now the first first i got wind of this was verntar he dropped some information in the mve general chat and I guess I can, I, I'm sure Verntar won't mind me going share screen on this. So if I can see, no, I can't see because it's in. All right. So yes, Verntar dropped what the footprint looked like for the, what are they calling it? The large <laughs> version four factory? Yeah. So, and this was on a 2,517 up squared property. And then he also posted a, normal large factory for comparison oh wow yeah so then i went and checked all my plus four thousand up squared properties and it didn't even come close to fitting those so yeah there was a lot of speculation as to what this can be now i know is dak still in yeah did you want to chime in on this for anything dak on what it took to the size of the property it took to fit one of these i love this smile you're killing me man (laughs) Just share what you want to. Don't get yourself in trouble. I know there's like it's hot. plans brewing. Uh, so. Look at him. It, it takes words. a very big property. Yes. 18,000 be... up squared. Your one is it's on. Is that correct? 
it's not mine technically uh, okay. um but yeah so rio for many of you that don't know or didn't catch on when rio released was the only city that had plus 5,000 UP2 size properties. Yep. If you were lucky enough to get one of the really big properties, i.e. 10,000 plus, you were able to fit an L4 factory on that. Mm. As an example, on an 18,000 UP2 property, you can fit the factory and have 9,000 UP2 inventory space. Yes. That's huge. Yeah, and that, that I was, know that for a fact. Yes. There, there was speculation, you know, what are these factory for? I kind of speculated personally that I thought maybe this is setting up for um, UGC cars. Uh, yeah, we just don't know at this stage. So, well, I started talking about it already in, in UCC. So um, Everybody knows that Matt Chef and I have been talking about automobiles for a very long time. And so we, we have been trying to invest in building and prepping for when UGC cars is a reality. Mm -hmm. That includes having properties that are large enough. If you look at MV Motors, the size of their property is massive. Yep. Um, and when you look at how many cars they're able to put in there, it doesn't look like a lot. Uh, and so the, the idea of being a boutique, and, I, and I'm thinking, so on an 18,000 UP2 property, I consider that to be a boutique car shop, mm. right? Uh, which if you think about it from an upland perspective, that's crazy that 18,000 is a small um, business, yes. right? But in terms of cars and what we've seen with MV Motors factory and, and what they produce in their inventory space and so forth, uh, I still consider that to be relatively small. But given that UGC automobiles probably won't be out for some time, mm. given that there might be partners that are coming in to build some of these, um, you know, build their own brands and so forth, I think that um, being smart about how you build what you build and how you approach your marketing in terms of your content that you're creating is going to be key to any kind of meta venture success that you might try to have. The other alternative to cars and something that's actually more viable more uh, sooner rather than later is outdoor decor. If you think about the decor that goes on these structures, on these buildings, if you think about an apartment structure, how massive is that? And so, you know, on a 9,000 UP2 prop, you might only be able to get a few apartment outdoor decor shops, <clears throat> uh, outdoor decor ornaments out there. Ah, uh, you mean structure no, ornaments. A structure ornaments, yeah. sorry, structure ornaments, but not decor. They can't do that because they said you don't need, they've, they've yeah, they did say there, that. That you don't need a massive property. So for them to flip on that, that'd be, yeah. cool, they'd be in all sorts of trouble. But Jeez, I do see it for oh, the cars. Yeah. Well, go ahead. I was going to say, you speculated well, that it might be um, private jets manufacturing. <laughs> You never know, or boats. You never yeah. know. You never know. It could be all kinds of transport. Heck, it could be, you know, making the trailers for a semi trucks. Who oh, knows? Ooh. Yeah. I'm going to put it out there that I think it's, it is a official partnership outdoor decor brand. So think of, I'm just going to say the name because it's a well known. Imagine IKEA coming in and doing outdoor decor. I think. That's, Only that's, if you want your stuff to come with missing parts. Yeah. Don't sue me. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Put it together yourself. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my speculation, but who knows? Uh, DTEC thinks airships. Um, yeah, I think this is definitely not something you should FOMO into. You shouldn't be out there trying to buy a massive property on the secondary market to put up a gig, giga chad factory that you just <clears throat> Absolutely. You should have listened to Cheese when she said buy the big properties like yes. months ago, maybe even a year ago. Yeah. Well, but they didn't have anything above 5,000 until no. Rio. And then they haven't had anything above 5,000 since Rio. Yes. So if you're looking to buy or want to get in on that, it's, it's kind of a very limited opportunity. Yes. Yeah. Don't FOMO. <laughs> Don't FOMO a GigaChad factory. Don't FOMO. No, and it's extremely expensive to build and oh, it's going yeah. to have limited purpose. Don't yep. do it. 
Was it like 50,000 spark hours or something? Uh, 52,600 spark hours. Yeah, yeah. and wow. as, as Upland Papa just mentioned too, like even if you go to all that trouble and you do it, there's no guarantee you're going to get a mid-adventure for it. You may be waiting months, potentially years too. So yeah, have to wait and see. All right, uh, moving on. Now, in last week's show, I suggested that the UDU isn't the oldest and most stable and exclusive node development team for no reason. One of our core strengths is our willingness and ability to continually adapt and evolve. And on that note, today we are pumped to introduce the Metaverse Ventures Alliance concept. So yes, yes as horrified jazz, we do have another acronym, the MBA. Um, the following is a basic overview of what this is going to be all about. So the MVA, the Metaverse Ventures Alliance, is going to be the new marquee branding that will cover and encompass the existing Upland Development United and Metaverse Ventures Entertainment umbrellas. And it also sets us up to do likewise for all of our various MetaVenture, Web3, NFT at, um, ventures. Um, as you should know by now, the UDU is the umbrella brand for all of our various node development projects. The MVE is the umbrella brand for all of our various metatainment projects. And it is quickly becoming apparent that Discord spread is getting out of control. It's just totally out of control. And that's just within our own little group. Um, as our MetaVenture projects expand, and you know, it's not just MetaVentures, it's our it's our NFT projects, it's our other Web3 spaces and all of that. Um, MVA will provide coverage for all of the above. So what does that mean? I always kind of suck at describing <laughs> my thoughts. So I put this really shitty graphic together. <laughs> um, if that's going to come up, did I press your screen? Yes, I did. So what does marquee branding mean? Well, if you can see on the screen, if you're listening on the Spotify, what we got here, it shows the Upland Development United logo. As I said, that's the umbrella brand for any, we set that up as the umbrella brand for any of the, you know, Upland related neighborhood projects or whatever we want to do. That's the umbrella brand that covers that. MVE, that's the umbrella brand that covers all of our entertainment things, the one she show, you know, this podcast and whatever else if we expand in the future. And yeah, we, we have the Samurai Aquatics Discord. We've got DTEX Discord. Cheese is applying for a MetaVenture. We have, um, there's a whole bunch of UDU members who have MetaVentures or we have, uh, affiliated people who have NFT projects and all of that, that we're, we're getting more and more and more of these tiny little discords and, you know, nobody can keep up with it all. So MVA, the Metaverse Ventures Alliance will encompass and cover all of the above. So basically anything and anything we want to do in the Web3 space will fall somewhere within the MVA. <coughs> mark. Yeah, so basically if you don't want to have Samurai Aquatics MVE, UDU, et cetera, you could just be a part of the MVA. You could delete or unsubscribe to the other discords and you'll get all the information the other ones will have. It'll just kind of push all the announcements, all the all the proper informational stuff to the MVA discord. And yep. voila, you've turned four discords into one. Yeah, and over the coming months, we will start, slowly start merging the UDU, the MVE, the Samurai Aquatics, and all of our other affiliated servers will merge into a singular MBA server. Um, instead of having separate Discord servers, the MBA server will just have different sections that cover everything. So rather than continuing to fracture the community into smaller and smaller and smaller clicks, we are going to go in the opposite direction and start to pull things back together again. Um, if you've been around for a while, you, you'll know that this will play out very similar to when uh, way back in the day we merged, uh, we had the UDU server, we had the UDU A server, and we had a Spark server as well. And we merged all of those into the new, the new UDU server. Um, this is not something that is going to be rushed through, but as I said, it will set us up for more advantageous and long-term growth. And it's not something that we're going to be actively pushing as an expansionist agenda. But as I said, just between a few of us, we're quickly getting towards having half a dozen different servers for MetaVentures. It's way too much. You know, we can't keep up with it ourselves. Nobody can keep up with it. So it makes way more sense to have a central area with different categories for them 
rather than a whole bunch of these small standalone servers. Mm -hmm. Now, this is open to other participants. Like if you're somebody who has secured a MetaVenture and you want to get involved, that is potentially um, doable. And like I said, too, with NFT projects and that, the only disclaimer is that you have to be a fully vetted UDU member to be included in the server, or at least one person in your team has to be UDU. Um, now, I've been using the fourth wall digital as an example. Uh, Rob isn't a UDU member, but Joe is. So they would be listed in the NFT project section, of course, assuming they wanted to do so. Um, who else is an example? Um, Zoe, she's just had an NFT um, thing kick off. She's going to be in there. So... Yeah, there's the potential to get a whole bunch of projects in there as well. And like I said, it could extend to other smaller non-UDU node projects. So we we know we, as the UDU, we kind of inspired, encouraged our members to go out there and do their own node projects as well. So there's a few of those who don't have their own servers. Now that the potential is that they can have a little area in there for that. And um, yeah, the UDU server is famously locked down and not open to the public. Um, that will be continued. However, within the MBA server, there will be an open area for UDU information and all that sort of stuff. But most of the UDU node related stuff will be behind a road, a roll wall that's accessible only to fully upgraded members. Um, of course, the migration will see many of the UDU and MBE and Samurai Aquatics and all of the server aspects stripped right down to the bare essentials. And that kind of provides a bit of context for the weekly challenge that we did last week where we asked, you know, what do you like in the servers you're in? What don't you like? We're going to take a lot of feedback on board to kind of work through that process and get things sorted out. And yeah, um, in chat, yeah, it's going to take ages because like I said, I'm I'm about to head off to Japan for a month. It's not something we're going to rush through, but it is something we're going to actively start working towards. Uh, why is this necessary? Well, like I said, it's common knowledge that the Upland community has been fracturing into smaller and smaller servers. And most of us are feeling the burden of rampant and excessive expansion on the number of Discord servers that are out there as part of that spread. And one of the results of that, of course, is it's impossible to keep up with everything that's going on and genuine engagement levels are barely at survival rates. And that's even in some of the largest public Upland community discords. If you go in there, it's just a trickle of the same people saying the same thing day in, day out. So, yeah, we're going to go in the opposite direction and start trying to simplify things, um, getting more of us together working and engaging in a much more collaborative space. Now, Chief, did you want to um, outline some of the key people we've got on board to see this process through? Oh yeah, we, all right. So one of our VIPs from MBE and uh, Samurai Aquatics Moon Unit has been uh, reaching out to us, helping us a great deal with our spatial uh, for Samurai Aquatics, and he has just been around us for so long. He's a great guy, very trustworthy, and he has agreed to step up and help us with this with this new transition into the MVA Discord server. He he's very knowledgeable about this space, and we wanted to kind of get him on board and hire him to become part of the team yes and yeah it's, it'll be a very similar role to finsky's role within the udu team as well where he's kind of like a general manager and yeah. i we we did put the call out to if you want to be actively involved in that process obviously we'll be onboarding people slowly as we test things out i'm one i know zoe put her hand up to help out with that so thank you for that zoe um yeah if you want to be an active participant in that let us know because there's no shortage of work to do. So yes, keep your eyes and ears out for that MBA, Metaverse Ventures Alliance. All right, speaking of the weekly challenge, the last week it was to let us know in the YouTube comments or in the contest channel in the MBA server, what are some of your favorite features of any particular Discord server or what you didn't like? We had seven entrants. So the price for that is 7,000 Upwax. Let's give that away. Thank you for the people who took some time out of their day to send some feedback through. We did have some good feedback come through. So yes, thank you for that. 
All right, 7,000 big ones on the way for Kevin Lothar. Yay. Congratulations and thank you, Kevin. Let me get out a share screen. So that was last week's challenge. This week's challenge. Okay, so for this week's challenge, we are tasking you to submit a quips using the Google form link in the description. And I'll also share the link in the MBE contest channel. Uh, again, there'll be a thousand upex for every entry up to a maximum of 20,000, uh, but that's not all. <laughs> quips, if you didn't know, Quips stands for questions, insights, provocations, and statements. So if you submit one of those, not only do you go into the running for next week's challenge, but you also go in the running for a 5,000 upex weekly prize. So yes, let us know um, if you have any questions, insights, provocation statements related to the UDU, uh, it could be the MVA or Upland, whatever it is. And um, if we use that and you drop your Upland in-game name, we'll send you 5,000 Upex. Speaking of which, this week's quips was sent to us by in-game name Grizzly, who asks, with a lot of the floor properties in Buenos Aires being held by jailed Uplanders, how can or will Upland move forward and free up currently locked down properties? Does anyone even want to jump on that? Lots of people being jailed. I did see that um, in the chat last night, there's a lot of people investigating um, Spark upgrade, upgrade scammers, people that are doing property swaps to upgrade to um, director, get all the Spark and then funnel it into another account, not Spark, but keep re recycling the same properties to upgrade people. And then they're all staking on certain builds and flipping those for USD. There's a lot of greasy stuff happening. What can Upland do? Anybody want to chime in? What do you think, Cheese? Well, I think, I think that they're doing a decent job already. They're, <clears throat> if anyone has a suggestion, I, su I, su I suggest <laughs> you put it forward. But um, I do believe all the changes in treasure hunting all the changes in how they're doing the new city openings it's not ideal for everybody i know um i know i know um i always feel like i'm gonna get interrupted so i get distracted <laughs> i know it's not ideal it's not ideal for everybody but they have been catching people um how to get those properties back if these people don't, these like the guilty parties don't even respond or take the time to respond back, I'm not sure. I would hope that there would be maybe a time period of maybe 60 days that after, if there's no response at all from the player, that it would just go back to Upland. Yeah, it's a touchy subject because you talk about true ownership and this, that, and the other thing. Um, if it's a case of the getting the properties back from jailed players who refuse to work with the team to, you know, pay their fines or whatever it is to get them out, it, it starts to get very greasy if you're going to forcibly remove those from those people. Yeah, um, but we, there's some people who don't even answer back. I know, but there's there's some people who've bought a whole bunch of properties and then just want to walk away for five years and see what happens. They, they aren't jailed though, so I guess that's yeah. where the difference is. Um, we did remember we covered, I think it was two shows ago, we talked about that Upland does have a pipeline in for resurrecting properties that have been um, lost from the game due to uh, deleting accounts. And Finsky's mentioned that potentially KYC after Uplander status. That could be interesting. Mm. They're going to really limit the um, mainstream adoption if they go down that route. So that's a tricky one, but yeah, maybe maybe these things like spark upgrades and that maybe you just can't qualify for those unless you're kyc i can see that definitely yeah effin were you about to say something yeah i was but then i lost my train of thought so oh sorry <laughs> i do that to cheese all the time yes he does <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah so i'm not not exactly sure grizzly but yeah it's um it's definitely becoming more and more of a problem. Like I said, we, we see this within Midtown Terrace. There's a whole swathes of areas where the people are just gone, uncontactable. Um, not so we much an issue. What CJ said, breaking terms of service, kind 
could possibly Ooh. nullify the ownership. Yeah. But then the, the terms of services, there's too many gray areas in that too. It's, you know, it's a bit of a tricky one. I said, but I say like you have to at least reply. If you are, if you don't even reply for me, that's an automatic guilty. Yeah. Perhaps then there's a, there's a step, like you said, where a timer kicks in, you've got 60 days to apply. And through that process, there's a, there's a few automatic um, triggers where they try to get in contact with you again. Um, if, if you come back and, Hey, where's all my properties gone? Like, dude, you had like 90 days or whatever it may be, even if it like was if six you're months that, or something. Yeah. If you're that prideful where you're saying, Oh, I don't, I feel like I don't have to reply, then that's bully on you. Yeah. Yeah, there's for jail players, there's a few different categories that I've seen there. It's, it's like um, people who weren't aware that they were doing something that they shouldn't have been doing and then they get in jailed and they work with the team to sort it out and pay the fines or whatever. Or there's people who know exactly what they were doing and when those accounts get jailed, they just go, oh, whoops, busted, and then they just move on to make new accounts. So, yep. yeah, I think, I think you're right. If you're genuine, you're going to go out of your way to work with the team and try and get everything sorted out. So. Yes, and Finsky says Upland emails go to junk folder. Though, yes, I know. I I had to I block all of Upland's emails because I, I don't know if people know this. Um, with the outdoor decor factory, you know, we've got sixty items being processed at once. When those items finish being manufactured, I get sixty emails. It's just out of control. It's like Bing, 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 Bing. It's just ridiculous so. yeah but finsky if if they're in jail they're going to notice and they're going to contact them or look for yeah. that email in in the junk mail and if they're not playing that much within 60 days yes and hopefully they they would have chat activated as well and then they can ping them through that but i know this oh yeah i'm surprised how many people don't have chat activated there's a whole bunch of people i try to that's with. that's a line for me it should be on by default default yeah you, yeah you should be able to shut it off if you want to but it should be on by default yes all right oh and i forgot to i haven't ripped jazzy jazz's list Jazzy jazz. thank you for that jazz i'll copy and paste that now because we are at the back end of the show we're running late we should have been wrapped up by now but we had a few extra things to cover um Let's see if Wheeler Names is going to play nicely today. All right, where were we at? Um, yeah, that was from Grizzly. As I said, uh, the weekly challenge for this week is to submit a quips just like Grizzly did, and you will go in the running for the weekly challenge prize and also the 5,000 Upix. <laughs> All right, let's see who's going to play the 1 million Upix. What what's happened? What have I done now? I made a bad joke. Oh, I missed it. Sorry. I'm not our business partner. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Well, this is who's in the chat. If you can't see your name here, let us know now or forever hold your peace. MC Christian Dak, D Tech, F and Smoke, Elijah, Eric, Finn, uh, iPhone, not kinder. Who is iPhone? Who are you, iPhone? Kinder, Kachel. I think that guy left or uh, that person left. Uh, oh. Is uh, Wolf Warner in there? I know he came late. I don't see Wolf there, so I'll patch Wolf there. Oh, Blue Rain is not in there. Blue. All right. Blue Moon. Anybody Wolf else? Here. I just happen to be on the uh, on the train in New York City. Oh, that's all right, mate. We just didn't see your name in the list. Anybody else? I can't see chat cheese. Chat clear. I think it's good. <clears throat> all right, let's I see. Think I was iPhone, but um, I got on Wi-Fi, so I'm no longer the iPhone. Oh, okay, that's perfect. shelter. Yeah, Christian's yep. patched. Christian, in. oh, you're in there. All good. All right. Let's see who's going to play. Du, 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 du. Is was... C part of there? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> Our new name, Nomadan. Oh, cool. Are you there, Nomadan? Hello. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> hey, congratulations. Do you know how to play the One Million Up Experience? <laughs> Nomadan? <laughs> I'm sorry? Uh, I don't think he knows how to play, so you got to explain it to him. All right, we'll bring yeah, up the I'm... first wheel. All right. Is there nothing you want to tell us? 
Um, well, uh, first of all, uh, hello, and, and yeah, I'm glad that I was able to get it. But I, I, I think I'm see, I've seen the the game before on your show. But yep, uh, please remind me the the rules. <laughs> All right. Well, we don't have the mulligan in play by the sounds of it. So, yes, there's five chances for 25,000 upex on this wheel. Tell Cheese when to spin it, and she will clickety-click. You tell her when you want her to go. Um, no. All right. Five chances on the way for 25,000 upex. And number ooh, 10. Ooh, 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 oh, 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 my God. Woo! I can't see there's a delay. There's a delay. Ooh. Just over 1,000 Upex. And Nomadan, oh. just while I've got you, what's your Upland in-game name? Nomadan. Oh, it's the same. Awesome. Perfect. Yep. All right. So do you want to take that 1,000 Upex or do you want to risk it for the chance at 50,000 Upex? Mm, let me see. So there's only three. Three hmm. chances at 50 and the other prizes go down. Although there are a couple of 2,500s on there as well. Uh, let's go for it. <laughs> He's going for a cheese. Tell me when. Uh, one moment. No. All right. Three chances for 50,000 Upex on the way. It's a bit of a delay on our end. Oh, he's just missed the 25,000. He's gone right in between it. You got one more chance, buddy. One more yes. chance. Now, well, hang on. Do you want to bank that 500 Upex or do you want to go for the 1 million chance? Um, no, let's go for the chance. <laughs> All right. I think he's in with a good shot here, Cheese. I can feel it in me bones. Tell All Cheese right. when um, to No. All right. Let's see. There's NFTs on the board. There's one million Upex. <gasps> oh, my God. Go, 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 go. It's coming um, around. Um, Ooh, oh. short again. <laughs> wow, wow, 250 Upex. <laughs> yeah, but we had a good time, right? We yeah, had yeah. a good time. And that's what this show is all about. We might not have a clue what we're talking about or what we're doing, but we try and have a good time. <laughs> that's for, right. For your first time on the wheel, I'll send you a NFT, a more cheese wax wine and cheese NFT. Ooh. Just send me a DM with your wax wallet. All right. All right. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome. <laughs> Good job. It was nice to, to participate. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice to have you on. Thanks for, you know, supporting us and being on the show. And guys, Nomadan is my other manager of the Sunrise Node. Oh, yeah, I, awesome. I know that from. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. That's yeah, we, we've been working for a while. We're going to announce some things uh, in the near future. <laughs> well, don't nice. forget, if you've got something you want to promote, you can always jump on this show and do that as part of Spotlights and whatnot. So. Great, great, right. great to have you uh, as a platform. Thank you for, for what you do. Thank you. Cheers, mate. All right, yes, we need to get wrapped up so I can get to work. A reminder that to go in the running for the 1 million Upex wheels, just like Nomadan did, you should be in the Zoom at the start of the show for the snapshots and you need to be paying attention in the middle of the show to catch a code word or phrase. That was missed this chance. Um, yeah, so that you get a mulligan spin. And as I mentioned, if you have an Upland NFT or Metaverse product, service or event to promote, opportunities are always available for sponsorship and or engagement in the UDU podcast. And that also extends to the One Cheese Show. Um, just contact myself or More Cheese to discuss and secure your spots. And please check out our sponsors, co-hosts and other links in the description to help support them and the show. Like and subscribe, rate and review, spruik and spam. As we say, all that good stuff. Cheese, get us out of here, please. Stay fresh, you cheesy bags.
Are you looking for some of that quality outdoor decor? But you got no freaking idea where to go? Oh, come on over to Samurai Aquatics and Decor for all your outdoor decor needs. Got yourself an empty plot of boring virtual real estate in the metaverse, do ya? Yeah, just delete that. I'm still not ready, sorry. Got yourself an empty plot of boring virtual real estate in the metaverse, do ya? Well, maybe some kind of crappy ramshackle building that, I don't know, needs a bit of extra spunk to it or something. And stop mucking about and get yourself over to Samurai Aquatics Discord to see all our available stock. We've got loads of different decor to spend your pretend money on. We've got saunas to fire you up and ice baths to chew you the fudge out. Literally stock coming out of our ears. Grills, swings, seating and more. So much more. And if we don't got it, give us a buzz and we can probably make it. Get yourself on over to Samurai Aquatics at 30 Aqua Vista Way in Midtown Terrace, San Francisco, Liggety Split, and gorge yourself on outdoor decor.